Frank the Wood Rabbit. Frank could not believe that he was just a rabbit. He preferred to believe that he was a rabbit, which is very different from a rabbit. A rabbit has a brain the size of a pea, whereas Frank had a brain the size of a lima bean. There was plenty of room for ideas, both artistic and scientific, as well as metaphysical. Frank surmised that the length of a carrot divided by its diameter was always an integer. Frank believed that the sun was a giant carrot seen from one end. Attempting to explain his theories to rabbits was hopeless. Rabbits are too stupid, and rabbits make no sound when they speak. Now, Frank lived in a rabbit hole, which was surrounded by carrots. The only practical problem he ever faced was reaching for a distant carrot. He had plenty of time for his ruminations, both physical and metaphysical. Frank conjectured that in a former life, he had performed heroic acts. This would explain the abundance of carrots, clearly a reward for his virtuous nature. One morning, Frank's carrots were gone. He was just in time to see them being carted away by a truck. Frank ran after the truck, yelling, stop thief, as loud as he could. Unfortunately, rabbits make no sound when they yell. And the truck sped on. <laughs> Frank's carrots were being offered for sale. Frank could bear it no more. Frank silently proclaimed that the carrots were stolen property and proceeded to eat them. Frank grabbed as many carrots as he could hold in his mouth, which happens to be one, and ran. Frank ran into the section of the market that sold meat. Frank had never seen meat before. Frank did not have time for indignation. was close, said Frank silently to his dead companion. Meanwhile, a mother and her little girl entered the marketplace. The little girl believed in wishes, charms, fairies, psychoanalysis, and the four-leaf clover. The mother believed very little, but she did think that rabbit made a wholesome and nutritious meal. Frank decided to look as dead as possible 
until he had a chance to get away. The little girl asked if she could make a wish on the lucky rabbit's foot. The mother thought that was a silly superstition. It wasn't so lucky for the rabbit, she said. Nonetheless, she agreed to humor the child. Frank felt someone rubbing his foot. Frank heard the little girl say that she wished that her mother would let her have a pet. Pets cause allergies, said the mother. But Frank had an idea. Instead of looking as dead as possible, he tried to look cute. <laughs> the mother never could figure it all out. For the rest of her life, she distrusted any meat that seemed livelier than hamburger. The little girl never doubted that she had brought Frank to life by wishing on his foot. She treated Frank with the utmost indulgence and respect. When others heard of the miracle, they were amazed. Pilgrims came to visit Frank. They brought gifts of rare and exotic carrots. They would touch his foot in the hope of alleviating their afflictions. Sometimes Frank felt the need to confess that he'd been alive all along. In the words of Ludwig Wittgenstein, whereof one cannot speak, thereof one must be silent. Frank now believed that the abundance of carrots was a reward for his intelligence rather than his virtue. And in all the long and happy years that followed, Frank never spoke a word. <laughs>